validation. It's important because the entry widget has given the user the power of input. This means that as a developer, you need to make sure that the user makes the difference between a correct input and an incorrect one, which you can do in TikiInter if you use one of the three following methods. The first method we're going to explore on today's application would be simply to link the function of a buttons command with your entry widget. From what you can see, the first row over here has a button that says validate. The second method will be to simply use validate command, an option part of the entry widget that will allow you to link a function to evaluate your input. And last but not least, the third method is to have a combination of validate command and invalid command. So here's the starting code for today's video. We simply have a mainframe that is in green in the back of our GUI application. For every row inside of this mainframe, we have a label that is giving us a task that we need to put inside of our entry widget. An entry widget, and you're gonna see a status label, which is either telling you that it's waiting for your input, that your input is correct, or that is it is incorrect. In validation one, however, which is my row zero, you're gonna see that there's a button added under the name of validate. This is simply to display the first scenario where we're validating with a button. The rest of my sections are commented down below and we're gonna go through them one by one. When I run the first task that I need to do in validation, right here, my first task says enter a vowel. Perfect. So this code, this first method with a button, and obviously you should already have an idea of how to do this because I've shown it to you guys in previous tutorials. Uh, how to use a function inside of a button. So we're going to create a function that will simply see if I put a one here and I click on validate it, it's going to say that it's incorrect. And else, if I put a vowel, obviously you know it, it's going to say correct. So we're going to create the function and we're going to call it is vowel over here. And um, I'm going to compare my input to a string called all vowels. As simple as that. And obviously we create a value for our entry one dot get excellent and it's a simple if statement if input in all vowels status one configure i'm going to change the text to say correct sorry let's put it a little bit more exciting there put an exclamation point why not and else if the input is not in my vowels Incorrect. Now status one, we're going to go into validate and put command is vowel right there. And remember, don't put the parenthesis in there because it's a callback function. Run our application right now. I'm going to put one validate incorrect. Okay, so there you go. We have a form of validation that works right now. Validate correct. We see that this is working. However, Let's try it one more time. What if I have no input and I'm putting validate? Why does it say correct? This is not good. You need to always think of all scenarios, right? So when you're validating, you, you got to understand that there is more than one way the customer or the user can do this wrong. Actually, you got to think of it that way. All the ways that they can do this wrong. So we actually need to understand that it's very possible that there is nothing on your input. Like right now, so my input, since it has nothing in there and I didn't put anything there, I just clicked on validate. If the length of my input is zero, what I'm gonna do on status one, I'm just gonna configure it so that it says, still waiting. Three little dots and we're gonna turn this into an elif statement. Let's run that again one more time and see what happens. My customer clicks validate, still waiting, telling me that something's wrong. I need to put another value there. So I'm gonna put 12 once again, incorrect. When I put F there, incorrect, A, correct. And that is the first method of validation through a button. Okay, so now we move on to our second method of validation inside of our, of our GUI application. And to do so, we're simply just going to uncomment the other region right here, validate two. Oh, I'm just going to take this out of here, validate command. And 
And when I go and run my application, what do I notice? Okay, enter a number, that's our second row. And you realize that there's no button. So that means that there's something that is built into my GUI app or a new widget in there that actually is gonna uh, permit my validation, okay? And to do so, it requires you to read the documentation. And right here for validation, this is the entry widget documentation from TK. Uh, validate command, invalid command, and validate options are used to enable entry widget validation. Validate command. It's as simple as the button command, guys. And uh, when I go into my entry widget, in order for you, for, for you to use it, you just simply need to write as an option, validate command, and you get a link, a callback function onto it. Just how you do it with your button. I'm just gonna take away this section out of my code so that you guys don't get confused. Uh, this one too, I'm gonna lower it down. And I have already my callback function ready for this one. So basically we're gonna be taking the input of my second entry widget. If the length is equal to zero, it's gonna say still waiting. If there's a digit inside of it, is digit is a built-in method from Python that will take a string and evaluate if it has a digit. If is digit equals true, then my status is gonna be correct, else it's gonna be incorrect. And remember guys, the one thing with validation is that they need to actually return a value. So if something is correct, I'll put return true. If something is incorrect, I'll put return false, right? But even for the for the scenario where there's nothing in there, I'll still return true because technically the person didn't do anything wrong. They just didn't put an input in there, right? And we're going to go straight into validate com command and put is number right in there. We're going to run our application. Okay, I'm going to put 12 in there or... Nothing's happening. All letters. And by now, you know my channel. I'm showing you guys your own mistakes. There's something wrong here. And validate command not only requires you to have return values for true and false inside of your callback function, but it also requires you to have another option, the validate option, which will determine when validation occurs. It may be set to any of the following values. So with validate command, we link a function to show what we need to do to validate it, what, what's our standard, but we also need to tell our GUI application when something is getting validated. And that's what validate does. So we're gonna try key. The entry will be pre-validated prior to each edit when you press on a key. So validate equals to key. I'm gonna run my application right now and I'm gonna put one here. Obviously, I'm gonna get correct. Ooh, weird, right? I get still waiting. Uh, why is that? The reason is exactly because of what the documentation is telling you. The entry will be pre-validated. Pre-validating being a keyword right here. And that's very important here. Meaning that even though I put a digit in there, like two, you, you, real, you saw that? before it said correct, like right now it said correct, it's evaluating the value before what you have right now. So if I put F in there, I had an empty string, right? So it technically had length of zero and that's what it's telling me, it's still waiting. So I'm gonna delete this and oh, it says incorrect once again. That's really annoying for your user. And uh, we're gonna run this again and just do another example. I'm gonna put an incorrect something here and still waiting, obviously, because it's taking the last value and not the current value. You guys realize how confusing this can be for your user? And not only, there's no bugs on your code. You're, you definitely actually just set it to key, but it leads people to, to think that you do have bugs because obviously this is not working. And not just that, what if I put a number, like what if uh, instead of saying enter a number, it says, oh, what's your answer? What if this is an exam? This is a task form and this is my, my answer for my last last one. I put one, still waiting and when I put 12, it says correct, but is my answer truly 12? Not really, because since it's pre-validation, this is actually taking the value of one. So instead of putting 12, my code thinks I put one in there. And that is the dangers of pre-validation. I just showed you guys something. To be a good programmer, you need to read the documentation of whatever you're using. So that's key. And uh, we're gonna choose another one, which before focus, I'm gonna try focus in. Focus in. 
run my application. And what does it mean when you focus into an entry widget? It simply just means this. Whenever the cursor is inside of it and it's waiting for you to write on it and you can see it by the blinking cursor, obviously. So focus in right here, still waiting. Excellent. So we just focus right in there. We realize that we don't have a string in there. If I put 12 in there, I go somewhere else. I focus in once again. Correct. Great. I'm going to put FR in there and incorrect. And by now you've guessed it that the other option focus out is instead of clicking inside of my entry widget, I will click outside of it. So still waiting 12. Oh, sorry. I didn't, I didn't switch it. Actually, it's still on focus in focus out run my application. Okay. It doesn't say still waiting so far. So good. When I focus out, correct. Excellent. And that's exactly how this works. So still waiting right there. And we're going to put ER still incorrect. We're going to put a number in a letter incorrect because it has to be a number. So 45 once again, correct. And that's actually how focus out work. And when you put focus, it's simply when the entry receives or loses focus. Guys, you know, just read the documentation. It tells you everything you need to know. And um, well, I'm just going to set it as focus on this one. <clears throat> and when you put all validation is performed for all above conditions, which is key focus, focus in and focus out. So we now move on to the third way we can use validation. And the third validation method is not far different from the second one. We're still going to be using validate command. We're just going to add another special element to it, which is also built into the entry widget, which is invalid command. So invalid command, what does it, what does it do? The invalid command is evaluated whenever the validate command returns a false value. And that's why I was making an emphasis. Whenever you create a validate command, a callback function, you need to return true or false in whatever scenario you're put in, because that way you can actually create another function and link it to your invalid command. And I'll show you guys how this can be useful. So this is my validate command and my invalid command uh, callback functions. And we're going to run our application to see how this works. So our third task is to enter a palindrome. For those who don't know, a palindrome is a word that can be that sounds the same and you can read it the same way and the letters are the same when you read it either from right to left or from left to right. So like mom or wow are two very simple examples of palindrome. So that's what we're going to be evaluating. So in my first evaluation is palindrome. We get the entry widget value. We put it in lowercase and then we create actually a copy of that into reversed. So we get that entry widget and, in, and we reverse it. And to do so, we use some uh, some string manipulation right here. And then after that, if the length is zero, obviously we're going to be saying still waiting. So if reversed and input are the same, we say nice palindrome or else we return false. And what happens when we return false? We call out our invalid command and is not palindrome basically has a full list of palindromes that we can use like level, madam, mom, noon, race car. And then it creates a proposition. So proposition will take a random choice of palindromes. Random, by the way, is something that I had to import, import random. And then in the package random, you have the choice, which you takes on a list. And then choice is going to just take whatever value that is inside of that list in a random matter. And then you just, we're just going to propose it to our user. Let's just see how that works out and how that looks. So on my entry three, validate command is going to be equal to is palindrome and then invalid command will be is not palindrome am i missing something here guys you guessed it is validate and we're going to put focus in there run our application right here waiting for input still waiting i'm going to try let's try orange uh click over here i propose rotor so this is not a palindrome so it's proposing something to us and that's what happened here so basically we put orange we know that orange is not a palindrome because our reverse string that is a copy of our input just on from right to left came out false and since all the other ones are true when this is false just how documentation tells us 
invalid command is evaluated whenever validate command returns a false value. Now that since we return a false value, we came into is not palindrome and this function started go started working and we just took out rotor from it, uh, which is right here, rotor. And then we our status tree is pretty much proposing it. Status tree configure, I propose rotor. This is not really a third method of validation, but it is a nice combination. It is nice to actually redirect your user when they're making a mistake. So, oh, there, there again, there it goes again, madam. It's proposing it to me, so might as well. You know, let's just put madam in there and then nice palindrome. And that's how invalid command works, guys. So I hope you guys like this tutorial. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like or subscribe. Leave a comment also if uh, you believe that I missed something or if you want to just add on to the topic or simply if you didn't like something about the video, that's totally okay. So uh, see you guys next time and thank you for listening to me.